it's Miss Hayes, and today we're going to talk about part two of basic sentence structure. Specifically, we're going to talk about complex sentences and compound complex sentences. We're also going to talk about subordinating conjunctions. Before we get started, make sure you are adding on to your notes from sentence structure part one. And if you have filled up your notes completely, then you may want to just pull out another sheet of notebook paper, start up new Cornell notes. All right, your essential question for this video is the same, and that is, how can I avoid run-on sentences and sentence fragments in my writing? So we already talked about simple sentences, we talked about compound sentences, we talked about independent clauses. But before we move on, you need to know about dependent clauses, because while simple and compound sentences only use independent clauses, compound and complex sentences use independent clauses and dependent clauses. So a dependent clause is a clause that has an incomplete thought. Just like the independent clause, a dependent clause also has a subject and a predicate, but it has an incomplete thought rather than a complete thought. So how do we make a thought incomplete? Well, thoughts are incomplete when they leave the reader hanging. So in talking about clauses, you can make an independent clause dependent by adding a subordinating conjunction to the beginning of an independent clause. The subordinating conjunction does two things. First, it provides a necessary transition between the two ideas in a sentence. Just like any conjunction, conjunctions create transitions. But the subordinating conjunction also reduces the importance of one clause so the reader understands which of the two ideas is more important. Subordinating conjunctions always come at the beginning of independent clauses to make them dependent. So subordinating conjunctions always start a new clause. Here's a list of subordinating conjunctions. Please make sure you have these in your notes. Conjunction, junction, what's your function? Hooking up words and phrases and clauses. Conjunction, junction, how's that? Subordinating conjunctions identify some clauses as being less important than other clauses. So if you have an independent clause and a dependent clause, your dependent clause has a subordinating conjunction, so that means that it is less important than the independent clause that it follows. So let's look at these two examples. We have the sentence, after Sally went to the store, Billy's car exploded, and we have the sentence, before Billy's car exploded, Sally went to the store. Their meanings are different because the independent clause is different for both sentences. So in the first example, our independent clause is Billy's car exploded. That's really exciting. That independent clause is the main point of the sentence. Sally going to the store in that case is not really that exciting. In the second example, however, the independent clause is Sally went to the store. So Billy's car exploding really isn't important in this sentence. The main point is that Sally went to the store. Authors will use this to their advantage to create a certain effect. It might create understatements. So Billy's car exploded, no big deal. Or it might also make us wonder about what Sally actually went to the store for. Who knows? Maybe she went and bought some fireworks, or maybe she bought some fertilizer. Suddenly, Sally's not looking so innocent. Complex sentences take one independent clause and one or more dependent clauses and squishes them together. Now, remember, dependent clauses have a subordinating conjunction. So that means that one of the clauses in our complex sentence is more important than the other clause in our complex sentence. Now the thing to remember with complex sentences is that you can really move these clauses around and that can be a lot of fun. But if you put a dependent clause before an independent clause, you have to have your comma in between the dependent and the independent clauses. However, if you put your independent clause before your dependent clause, then you don't need a comma. So to figure out these comma rules with both compound sentences and with complex sentences, go ahead and check out this real quick TED Ed video called A Comma Story. Have fun. Commas are tricky things, especially when subordinates and conjunctions are involved. If you can remember a few basic rules, a simple law of physics, and some common scenarios, you will be able to use commas correctly. I like to think of the different parts of our sentence as characters. Let's meet a few of them. The tiny conjunctions, the mighty subordinates, 
and the clever comma. Conjunctions are small and nimble. They are words that connect clauses, words, and phrases. You can easily remember the conjunctions by remembering the acronym FANBOYS. The conjunctions are FOR, AND, NOR, BUT, OR, YET, SO. Because they're so small, more often than not, they require the help of a comma, but not always. Subordinates, on the other hand, are the WWE heavyweight champions of sentences. They are words that connect two unequal things, dependent and independent clauses. Subordinates make it very clear what is being prioritized in a sentence. Commonly used subordinates are although, because, before, however, unless, and even though. Because subordinates are all about power, they can do a lot of heavy lifting by themselves. But, of course, sometimes even the strongest among us need some help from our clever friends. Because our clever comma is so nice, she often roams her neighborhood looking for some community service to do. Today, as soon as she leaves her house, she sees a subordinate lifting the weight of two complete sentences, one on each arm. Bartha Lame loves engaging in political debate, even though he usually loses. The comma asks the subordinate if he needs help. Well, we know that subordinates are the WWE heavyweight champions of sentences. They can easily hold the weight of these two complete sentences because they are distributed evenly on both arms. So, when the comma asks if it can help, the subordinate is appalled at the idea of needing assistance. No thanks. Maybe next time. So the comma continues on. Soon, she sees a couple of subordinates attempting to lift the weight of sentences directly in front of themselves. Even though Bartholem loves to sing, he never sings in front of others. The comma asks the subordinates if they need help. They might not want to admit it, but this time the subordinates do need help. Complete sentences weigh quite a bit. Simple physics tells us that it's easier to balance heavy objects if the weight is evenly distributed. So while the subordinates are quite capable of balancing two complete sentences when carrying the weight on both sides, they're having trouble picking just one up. The comma rushes over to help the struggling subordinates. But how will she help? When subordinates begin sentences, the comma will place herself directly after the first thought or complete sentence. After helping the subordinates, our comma heroine continues on and spots a conjunction holding the weight of two complete sentences. Bartha Lame was accepted into the University of Chicago and he is on the waitlist for Stanford University. The comma asks the conjunction if he needs help. Of course he does. Hurry! The comma rushes and places itself before the conjunction. Fanboys aren't as militant as subordinates. For this reason, the commas don't have to fall in line behind the fanboys. Fanboys are courteous creatures. They allow the comma to go ahead of them. Helping others is hard work. On her way home, our comma sees a conjunction holding up the weight of a complete sentence and a fragment sentence. Bartha Lame is going to major in molecular biology or interpretive dance. The now exhausted comma asks the conjunction if he needs help lifting the items. This is one of the rare occasions where a conjunction doesn't need the help of a comma. The conjunction assures the comma that help isn't needed, which is good for the comma because by now all it wants to do is go home and rest up for another day of vigilant sentence constructing. We also have compound complex sentences and compound complex sentences are basically what they sound like. It's a combination of compound sentences and complex sentences. So we know that compound sentences have two independent clauses separated by a coordinating conjunction and a comma. And we also know that complex sentences have one independent clause and one dependent clause. So a compound complex sentence has two or more independent clauses along with one or more dependent clauses. So they can have as many clauses as they need, really. The most important thing to remember with compound complex sentences is that they must still follow the same rules as compound sentences 
and complex sentences. So you must put your comma before the coordinating conjunction like you do in compound sentences. And if you have a dependent clause before an independent clause, you still need to have a comma just like in complex sentences. All right, you should have information on these four different types of sentences. We also talked about different types of conjunctions. So make sure that you have these two types of conjunctions in your notes as well. And if you miss something, you can go to this website to download this PowerPoint. Please summarize your notes, answer the essential question, make sure you chunk, and create possible test questions. I will see you tomorrow.